Well, very good morning to you and to our SABC viewers. Uh, we're coming to you all the way from the Nelson Mandela Bridge here in Johannesburg. And this is for the Long Walk to Freedom March, led by uh, members of the hashtag Zimbabwean Lives Matter movement. And this is quite a significant area and quite, uh, you know, symbolic uh, one as well. Because as you know, that most people associate the Long Walk to Freedom with the struggle, the late struggle icon, Otato Nelson Mandela. But this time around, uh, these Zimbabwean activists are actually you know saying that they actually want to achieve a freedom of their own and by this they will be uh, actually marching to the citadel of power in Pretoria uh, as many as they are behind me of course uh, they have to do this in line with the COVID-19 regulations so just a few number of these activists will actually be marching uh, to Pretoria and of course the, the whole basis and the aim of this march is uh, to campaign against the economic turmoil that's actually happening in Zimbabwe Zimbabwe, the arrests and the human right violations and abuses in the country as we've seen uh, recently. Uh, they also want to draw the attention of the African Union and SADC as well. They want the African Union to uh, implement the African peer review mechanism uh, to actually help the people of Zimbabwe and help them with their plight. Uh, as uh, we've been uh, reporting and we've been seeing our colleagues there uh, in the SABC just reporting on matters about what's actually happening uh, in Zimbabwe we saw that uh, you know the, the human rights of the people of Zimbabwe have been violated by security forces we saw there you know um, uh, quite prominent people uh, members of the opposition leaders like uh, Jacob and uh, I beg your pardon for that pronunciation, Garavume and journalist Hopewell uh, Chinono, uh, who've been very vocal about the alleged corruption in Zimbabwe, have been arrested. And we all know that Chinono has since been detained. He's, it's been weeks uh, since his detention in Zimbabwe. And of course, he's, he's, he's his lawyer now, Beatrice Mteta, is now fighting for her legal uh, career. But actually, just to take us through, uh, you know, their plight and what's currently happening, what prompted this much, we'll speak to the organ organizer of this match which is Tris Ndovu. Mr. Ndovu, thank you so much for joining us uh, on SABC News. Now, we are told that uh, this group will be marching all the way to Pretoria. I mean, it should be a maximum of 12, 12 hours. Yeah, that's correct. I think it's worth uh, the determination, it's worth the cause. Uh, we are determined to uh, make it a, a, a very serious uh, commitment for, for people to be free. Freedom does not come easy. And we have seen by the, uh, in fact, they've summed it all when you said uh, this bridge symbolizes, uh, it was named after the, the struggle icon, a man that walked, that literally walked in his life for, for, for freedom of people in, in South Africa. And we are taking it from there to mean that when we need freedom, we must commit ourselves. We all, it also symbolizes the struggle and suffering of the people back in Zimbabwe. The people are going through hardships and therefore we want to associate ourselves with solidarity with them and we are going to work to, to highlight and also to keep on putting pressure to the government of, of Emerson Mnangago who is in denialism, who is actually denying that there is crisis in that country even though when it is all over for everyone to see that uh, the citizens of the country, they are running away to the neighboring countries looking for jobs. It is clear that about 800% inflation in that country shows that there's no, uh, the economy is, is, is actually in ICU. Uh, about uh, 7.5 million people are setting starvation. It is a, a crisis on its own. There is a political crisis in that country. We need a, pol we need a political solution. And we believe by actually calling to African Union, Chairperson uh, President Zira Ramaphosa, we are are seeking for African solutions to African problems and we are saying that uh, there is a policy uh, uh, document on African peer review mechanism which gives him the right to intervene to other member states on the issues of governance, on the issues of economic development, on the issues of violation of human rights and therefore there is nothing to, which can stop him on the basis of so, uh, sovereign that uh, uh, often member states quite uh, uh, defensive using that policy. African Union, do you think that this march will actually draw the attention of the AU and uh, SADC? 
in a struggle like in any fight you keep on throwing punches you never know which punch will drop your uh, will make you achieve or win the struggle so it's for one and part and parcel of the struggle of of, of, of trying to to draw the attention uh, we believe yes it's possible because we are not going to do this just for two hours or one hour we are going to move for the whole day 12 hours possibly and that perhaps when the that kind of news can reach the offices or the high authorities uh, we want to believe that uh, a man like uh, Comrade Siria Ramaphosa, who have gone through the path, who have been a leader and activist himself, may know and understand what it means when activists uh, sacrifice, put themselves on such a, a very torrid uh, journey. Uh, it means the cause is really is serious. We are showing how difficult the situation is in Zimbabwe. So is there a memorandum that you're going to be handing over? And if so, uh, who will you be handing over the memorandum to? Uh, we have the memorandum, but we do have in, there are no proper arrangements, formal proper arrangements which were made because the procedures, uh, the standard procedure that is supposed to be followed is literally banned because of COVID-19 regulations. So if uh, there's anyone, any influential leader out there who hears us can arrange with the protocol we can arrange with the uh, the office of the president yes if with the president avail himself or send someone we will be prepared to give him that memorandum so now i mean we've seen a lot of people have been criticizing the zimbabwean government including the eff saying that the zimbabwean embassy should be removed here uh, recently we saw that special envoy uh, to zimbabwe by uh, the former uh, a parliamentary speaker i beg your pardon uh, no i beg your pardon the former uh, national assembly speaker balegambet and the former safety and security uh, minister sidney mufumamadi uh, but people have been criticizing that envoy saying that honestly it was just a lukewarm response from the south african side to actually go to zimbabwe not much was actually done yeah of course you see those people they did not uh, have the mandate of the regional body like the au so the dictator emerson nangagwa's regime's government was able to defer them uh, was able to say i oh, know you cannot come here because you don't have that mandate the, rather it's a government uh, envoy government to government diplomat relations they, they were to talk they, they actually limited them from going to meet other uh, 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 people like the civil society the opposition leaders and the, the religious leaders all the stakeholders because I we believe it so it is supposed to be a comprehensive and inclusive engagement which uh, will give uh, uh, South Africa uh, a, a clear perspective as to what exactly is taking place when we talk about police brutality violation of human rights and other things that you just summed uh, in your introduction. You talk about the violation of human rights. Uh, let's talk about uh, Mr. Chinono. I mean, uh, he's his lawyer and human rights activist, uh, Mam Beaches and Teta, is now fighting for a legal career. Uh, I mean, what do you make of this it's situation? Quite deplorable and uh, it's, 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 it's pathetic, you know. When a lawyer who had been known for defending human rights in Zimbabwe and, and even other places is denied to exercise his legal right to represent his clients, and that also means that the, the client also is denied his legal right to be represented by the lawyer of his own choice. It's deplorable. It shows how much uh, serious the problem in Zimbabwe is when uh, uh, activists such as Shinono are denied uh, the right to legal representation, are also denied bail. When you are denied bail and the trial is dragged for such a long time, it is just uh, is a stand amount to, to, to de de detention detention without trial therefore it's it's, it's, it's very bad uh, the situation is so difficult it's not only not going alone we got in garuvumi also he's inside and he's being denied you also have Kuraone, a young man in masungo is also denied the, the right to, to 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 pay so this the, the situation the is, is so uh, deplorable in the country and we call upon uh, the leaders of the region to look at to we call upon to to, to show solidarity because uh, 
uh, even in all revolutions, as you know, uh, Natasha, the African liberation movements, when they wanted to liberate these countries, they started on uh, on solidarity. We know even the uh, Nelson Mandela went as far as Ethiopia and it is singing for, liber for, for, for solidarity. We know uh, all, all the region, all, all the other liberation movements, they went to Tanzania, ANC itself, went to Zambia, into exile, singing for, for, for solidarity. There is a clear identified problem in, in, in the region and that that is the problem, the problem is the political crisis, political leadership, which is causing all the problems which we have in the region. And that problem of Zimbabwe is spilling over in all other countries. And if you, if they are going to nurse that problem, they are going to, uh, to, we are going to end up with the situation we had in Europe in, in, in the 19, uh, during the First and Second World War, where Germany was allowed to do whatever it wanted in terms of the police of abasement now zimbabwe is actually practically the same the, it is so arrogant and bullish is bullying the region as a whole and it seems the african leaders are afraid or are, are not very are coming out very clearly to, uh, to, to 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 tell them that they are wrong i am also we are also encouraged by the sentiments which have been echoed by the ministers of 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 of, 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 of Syria ramaphosa's government of uh, uh, admitting at least to say that there is crisis in zimbabwe i think that's a <laughs> better start. And I mean, lastly, you talk about, you know, Zimbabwe bullying all these other countries and the other regions. What do you make of the assertion um, and the notion where some people have been saying that, you know, the AU chair's silence on the matter is, is quite deafening and it's quite worrying? Yes, it's quite worrying to think that the, the AU, such a powerful African uh, uh, body uh, that is expected uh, to to intervene. You know, it does. We don't need to wait until the situation of Zimbabwe is like what is happening in Mali. We don't need to wait for the for the people to die. We don't need to wait for for for, for blood shed through military coups in order to resolve uh, the issues. It is time to be proactive. And I also I was also encouraged by the commission of AU co uh, uh, secretariat. Uh, chair Faki, who actually highly uh, indicated that uh, Zimbabwe must not Zimbabwe regime should or uh, uh, should not use the COVID-19 lockdown regulations uh, as a tool to oppress or to deny people their democratic right. So as we know that now uh, demonstrations are actually closed down. There's no space for anything. Actually in Zimbabwe they don't use the, those lockdown uh, regulations are not used to prevent COVID-19 as we see but they are actually used to, to, to close down the democratic space of opposition politics and other right uh, activities. Thank you so much, Mr. Ndlovi, for your time and all the best. Uh, there you have it. That was Mr. Tras Ndlovi, the organizer of the Long Walk to Freedom uh, March. They will be embarking on that march right now, as I said, uh, to the Citadel of uh, Power in Pretoria. And it is really indeed a long walk, uh, a maximum of 12 hours that these Zimbabwean activists will be walking hoping uh, to highlight the plight of the people of Zimbabwe, employing on the AU and SADC, uh, you know, just to help uh, Zimbabweans and to help the situation uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, as from me, Natasha Peters, back to you in studio.